గుడ్ మార్నింగ్ స్టూడెంట్స్ హలో ఫ్రెండ్స్ వెల్కమ్ టు అశోక ఆన్లైన్ అకాడమీ యాజ్ పార్ట్ ఆఫ్ ది అశోక ఆన్లైన్ అకాడమీ వీఆర్ సేయింగ్ ది డైలీ కరెంట్ అఫైర్స్ ఫర్ ది వేరియస్ కాంపిటేటివ్ ఎగ్జామ్స్ ఇన్ ఇండియా ఎస్పెషలీ ది యూపీఎస్సి అండ్ తెలంగాణ స్టేట్ పబ్లిక్ సర్వీస్ కమిషన్ గ్రూప్ వన్ గ్రూప్ టూ అండ్ అదర్ ఎగ్జామ్స్ కండక్టెడ్ బై తెలంగాణ స్టేట్ పబ్లిక్ సర్వీస్ కమిషన్ సో ఫ్రమ్ టుడే వీ విల్ డిస్కస్ ది important current affairs of the 8th september 2021 in this class and also one good news for you guys and the students so every day after posting the video in the youtube channel of ashoka online academy evening by the evening time we will provide you the pdf both in the english medium and also in the telugu medium the pdf of this current affairs will be provided by evening morning we provide the video you just listen to the video understand the concepts in the video then by evening time you will get the notes so just take the print out of the notes and keep it with you for that particular day of current affairs so like that if you follow for 6 uh, months regularly i will guarantee you whatever the exam you write in india okay that is upsc or tspsc group 1 group 2 if the notification comes definitely you will clear that exam the current affairs portion we will deal very good up to the standard up to the standard we will deal that particular topics if you observe very clearly every day whatever the classes we are taking we can frame on a day current affairs for one day we can frame 30 questions on this particular current affairs topic every day so understand that very clearly so when you understand the this particular current affairs you will get 30 questions per day that is for sure okay soonly we will make the questions also and we will conduct the live current affairs questions also every weekend okay so follow this particular uh, what you call current affairs uh, videos in the ashoka online academy do subscribe to the channel share with your friends and your encouragement and support will give us the motivation to do more and more videos and informative videos for the students okay so thank you very much for your support okay from today this will be the pattern morning you will get a video by 8 o'clock 9 o'clock current affairs video then by the evening you will get the pdfs in the telegram group of ashoka online academy and also various whatsapp groups created by ashok sir in different districts in telangana so all the 33 districts okay the description will be provided in the what you call this below this video you subscribe and you will get the current affairs notes so just okay prepare only for the examinations and don't waste the time in unnecessary messaging in the whatsapps okay understand that very clearly use every minute for achieving your goals that's it okay why why because nothing can give you happiness in your life except your goal achievement nothing can give you happiness in your life except your goal achievement understand that very clearly okay so you have time you have energy you have opportunity you have chance utilize that whatever it may be whether it is upsc civil service exam tspsc group 1 group 2 if the notification comes okay you utilize that every day you gain some knowledge okay i, I assure you that you read you understand the concepts said by me in the class 30 questions per day will be yours understand that very clearly we are going to come out with very good programs in future also for the student community so understand this very clearly so let us start this ashoka online academy daily current affairs daily current affairs program okay we will discuss the 8th september current affairs so today the list of topics are very very important and all of them they are related with the prelims exams only whether it is upsc or uh, state public service commission list of topics are 13th brics summit and about the brics understand this very clearly then second is international day of clean air for blue skies what is this okay then world food program why it is in news then this is very very important india's first conservation reserve for sea dugong also called as sea cow kvic kadi and village industry commission prime minister employment generation program so these are the six topics of the day all are prelims related topics there is no mains topic for that today understand that very clearly okay so let me start the international organization 
topic or the regional organization 13th BRICS summit. So what is this? The 13th BRICS summit is going to happen on 9th September 2021. Understand that very clearly. That means the day you see this video on the day that 13th BRICS summit is going to happen. The Prime Minister Narendra Modi will participate in this particular summit. Understand this also very clearly. First we will discuss about this. Then we discuss about the BRICS. Okay. Now see here. Prime Minister, our Prime Minister Narendra Modi. So he is participating as a leader. As a leader or chairmanship. As a leader or a chairmanship of BRICS summit. BRICS summit or BRICS leadership summit. This is second time. This is second time. First time he participated in 2016 as a leadership of the BRICS group. Okay. In 2006 Goa summit. Now this time second time he is participating as a leader of the BRICS summit. Every year. Okay. Out of the five countries in the BRICS. Brazil, Russia, India, China, South Africa. Every year the chairmanship of the BRICS grouping will rotate from one country to another country. This year, this year, 2021, India is the chairmanship or India is the chairman of the BRICS summit. Okay. Or India took the leadership role to organize the BRICS summit in 2021. So whenever India is conducting, Indian Prime Minister will be head of the BRICS summit. So like that, this time Prime Minister is head of the BRICS summit. He is also participated as head of the BRICS summit in 2000. Uh, what you call 16 in Goa summit that is two times okay now this year this year the theme of the BRICS summit is intra BRICS cooperation for continuity consolidation consensus that means all the BRICS countries should okay coordinate and cooperate with each other and they should sit and talk on various issues at global regional level solve the issues and move forward intra BRICS cooperation for continuity, consolidation and consensus. Understand that very clearly. Okay, this is the theme. Okay, BRICS. Okay, 15th, uh, sorry, 13th BRICS summit. Now, India and India has outlined four priority areas for its chairmanship of BRICS. So, this year, India is having the chairmanship of BRICS. So, India has four pillars, announced four pillars for this particular BRICS okay, summit. So what are those four pillars? So see here that India announced in this particular big summit is reforming of multilateral systems, multilateral systems like bringing reforms in United Nations Security Council, bringing reforms in United Nations General Assembly, bringing reforms in World Bank okay, and the IMF. So these are all the various okay, reforms in the multilateral system that government of India proposed in this particular BRICS summit. First pillar. Second pillar is counter-terrorism. Counter-terrorism is the second pillar. So all over the world, the terrorism is increasing. Okay. From the Taliban takeover of Afghanistan, okay, the te terrorism is again rising throughout the okay, world. We have the problem with ISIS in the West Asian countries like Iran, Iraq and also the Syria. We have the problem with this particular uh, uh, ISI groups and Haqqani networks in this particular uh, Pakistan uh, territory. Okay, we have the problem with Taliban in the what you call uh, this particular uh, Afghanistan. We have different terrorist groups like Jaysh Muhammad in Pakistan. We have uh, okay, terrorist groups uh, operating in the what you call uh, the Al-Qaeda affiliates operating in the North African countries, especially the uh, what you call uh, Libya and also the, the this uh, Nigeria. So all this uh, terrorist organizations they are increasing at a global level and they are causing a lot of problem to the humanity. How you should tackle this particular terrorism that is called as the subject of counter terrorism is second pillar. Then third is using the digital technologies and tools for achieving the sustainable development goals. So sustainable development goals, United Nations sustainable development goals. So what are these? They are proposed in 2015. There are one 17, 17 sustainable development goals are there with 169 sub goals with 169 sub goals and these sustainable development goals, they should be achieved by all UN countries, all UN members 
okay between the time frame of 2015 to 2030 understand that very clearly they are the continuation of united nation millennium development goals united nation millennium development goals of 2000 to 2015 understand that very clearly so this is about the sustainable development goals the third pillar of the BRICS 13th summit is talking about what and how you should use the technologies for achieving the goals of the sustainable development goals 17 sustainable development goals by united nation from 2015 to 2030 all countries should achieve them with 169 targets then fourth pillar is enhancing people to people exchanges yes we have to enhance the people to people exchanges so that the world became a multicultural okay village so BRICS countries are there many people coming from China to study in India many people going to China for doing MBBS okay South African people coming to India for business purpose studies purpose okay and other purposes so like that the people to people exchange should be encouraged between the countries that is the fourth pillar four pillars are proposed one is the reform of the multilateral system second is the what you call counter-terrorism third is using the technologies for achieving sustainable development goals fourth is increasing people to people exchanges so this is how it is you need to remember only few things that uh, what is the theme of the summit and what are the four pillars that's it that is more than enough and how many times the prime minister has uh, uh, become the chairman of this uh, leader of the BRICS summit okay understand this very clearly this is the second time now let us understand about the BRICS so see here in short I will explain about the BRICS so in the last videos also when I am discussing about new development bank I discussed about the BRICS so here I will discuss only few points if you want you can see the previous videos of mine so see here about BRICS the Jim O'Neill the World Bank economist Jim O'Neill he coined the term BRIC he is the first person who coined the term BRIC, Jim O'Neill. Many exams uh, this question came. Jim O'Neill, the World Bank economist, he suggested a grouping called as BRIC, called as uh, consisting of Brazil, Russia, India, China. What he said is these are developing countries, first thing. Second thing is that these countries, uh, they account for more than 40% of the global population. And these countries, uh, they contribute more than 30 percentage of the global GDP so what he said is if these countries can come together and work together in economic prospects in financial prospects in terms of technology transfer in terms of people to people exchange in terms of cooperation and coordination in solving various global issues like global warming climate change water crisis counter-terrorism okay maritime security he said that there is a lot of scope for these countries if they come together and do the things together then a lot of good achievements or good results will happen at the global level and we can fastly achieve the united nation millennium development goals and fastly achieve the united nation sustainable development goals why because 40 percentage of the world population is living in this brick countries understand that very clearly that was the idea of the jim o'neill and he coined the term brick okay so what happened is that the idea of BRIC uh, was accepted at the global level and these countries leaders they sit together and discuss let us form a group. So like that in 2009 first BRIC summit was organized in Russia. Remember this many exams many times it was asked and in 2010 South Africa has expressed the interest to join the BRICS BRIC grouping BRIC grouping in 2010 it joined the BRICS but but South Africa officially participated in 2011 BRICS summit organized in China. South Africa attended the third BRICS summit. Understand this very clearly. 2009 first BRICS summit. 2010 second BRICS summit. 2011 third BRICS summit. Here South Africa became part of the this particular thing. So see here first two summits are BRIC only. From 2011 it became BRICS. Understand that very clearly. And in fourth BRICS summit, fourth BRICS summit, 2012, the fourth BRICS summit, it happened in Delhi. It happened in Delhi. It occurred in Delhi. Okay. Understand this very clearly, 2012 Delhi. So in this summit, in this summit, the fourth BRICS summit, 
they discussed about what is called as new development bank new development bank to be created by these brics countries where these countries will provide money to this new development bank and from that bank okay all the countries okay that is the united nation member countries will get the loans at low cost for development purposes so see here fourth brics summit delhi the idea of ndb was introduced and what happened what happened the idea was introduced understand that very clearly it was not formed it was not formed okay then exactly when it happened in sixth brics summit through 2014 fortaleza declaration fortaleza declaration fortaleza is a city in brazil so where ndb new development bank was established that means you can get a question new development bank is established in which year 2014 it is established under which organization it is established under the brics organization understand this then new development bank is established through which declaration fortaleza fortaleza declaration fortaleza is a city in brazil okay understand this very clearly the and new development bank is declared in which summit of brics sixth brics summit sixth brics summit like this different questions will come in the exams new development bank is established in which brics summit first third fourth sixth sixth new development bank is established in which year 2014 15 17 12 2014 new development bank is under which organization brics organization the fortaleza declaration 2014 okay is related to which of the following organization brics and it led to establishment of ndb so like the different questions will be framed and ndb headquarters is in shanghai city of china understand this very clearly okay now understand one more thing also there is something like brics contingent reserve arrangement cra there is something like brics contingent reserve arrangement understand these things very clearly 2014 two things happened one is ndb new development bank is established second is contingent reserve arrangement so what is this contingent reserve arrangement it is nothing but the contingent reserve arrangement okay you will have around 30 billion you will have 30 billion us dollars will be there in contingent reserve arrangement that money will be used by the brics countries during the balance of payment crisis during the balance balance of payment crisis situations understand this very clearly so 30 billion rupees is kept in the contingent reserve arrangement of the brics grouping this was established in 2014 along with ndb 30 billion dollars are kept in it whenever the brics countries faces the ba balance of payment crisis it means they are not able to pay the dollars okay or what whatever the money international forex reserve money okay to the for their imports from other countries that is called as balance of payment crisis very simple okay they are not able to pay the money for the imports that they are doing from other countries in terms of dollars or other international currencies that is the balance of payment crisis so that whenever these brics countries are facing this balance of payment crisis they use the money from the contingent reserve arrangement then they will just uh, okay pay for the imports they improve their economic situation increase the amount of dollars and forex reserves then slowly they will regain the economic stability so this is the the brics contingent reserve arrangement in 2014 was established as part of fortaleza declaration at 6th brics summit so brics account for 40% of world population and 30% of uh, global gdp so these things remember and understand for various types of exams so let us uh, take a topic uh, question that was already asked in the upsc okay i discussed this in the previous videos also 2014 question so see here upsc with reference to grouping of the countries known as brics consider following statement first summit of the brics was held in rio de janeiro in 2009 is it right i just now told you the first summit happened in what is called as russia understand that okay so he is saying rio de janeiro wrong this is wrong south africa was the last to join the brics grouping yes south africa was joined in 2011 brics grouping understand that okay first there is only brics right then afterwards what happened brics was formed right so this is how upsc will ask the question which of the following statements 
is correct only two is correct very simple question okay understand this very clearly now let us understand the second topic that is the international day of clean air for blue skies so what is this international day of clean air clean air means the air okay does not have any pollutants or simply it is okay the fresh air without any pollutants or air pollution for blue skies okay if there is no pollutants you can see the blue sky that is how it is so international day for clean clean air for blue skies is by introduced by unga unga means united nation general assembly united nation general assembly understand this very clearly united nation general assembly has bought this international day for clean air of blue skies okay it introduced this day okay since 2019 then 7th september every year is celebrated as international day for clean air of blue skies understand this the 2021 theme is healthy air healthy planet yes if the air is healthy without pollutants then entire planet will be healthy that means the life forms on the planet earth will be healthy understand that very clearly i will just give you one fact according to the world health organization according to the world health organization every year globally every year globally 1.2 crore people they die because of air pollution related issues understand that very clearly okay then if you take india if you take india every year every year 24 lakh people they die because of the air pollution related issues that is a huge number and in this 24 lakh people 12 lakh they die because of indoor air pollution and 12 lakh they die because of the outdoor air pollution indoor air pollution okay in rural areas people will collect the what you call dry sticks dry wood cow dung and they burn inside the village homes the women will breathe the poisonous gases like methane and carbon monoxide coming out from the wood and cow dung and they experience a lot of problem that's why the government of india has launched what is called as the free lpg connection free lpg connection to the households understand that very clearly okay so this is the background so that's why international day for clean air and blue skies is celebrated of clean air for blue skies understand this very clearly so what is the aim the aim is to prioritize the need for healthy hair for air for all while keeping the conservations broad enough keeping the conservations broad enough to encompass other critical issues like climate change human and planetary health as well as sustainable development goals very simple it talks about it is this is how you can understand this very simple prioritize the need for healthy hair so how you can uh, prioritize or ensure that healthy air is present very simple you need to create more and more forest you need to create more and more forest and trees so what will happen they absorb the co2 from the atmosphere conduct the photosynthesis release the oxygen the tropical rainforest on the planet earth they contribute to 40 percentage of the fresh oxygen in the earth's atmosphere understand that very clearly so very simple okay for that what you have to do you need to keep the conservations of the forest and apart from that if you do that what will happen you can also address the issue of climate change and also you can maintain good health for the pe people and also you can maintain good health for the planet that is other life forms and in the process you can also achieve the sustainable development goals that is what this statement is saying very simple understand this very clearly now let me explain uh, so this is about air pollution and how to stop air pollution at the global level let us understand okay air pollution issues in india let us understand the air pollution issues in india so just try to understand here i will discuss the air pollution in india i will discuss the air pollution air pollution in india so understand this okay air pollution in india okay how it will happen so let me discuss about these sources what are the sources of air pollution in india first thing is thermal power plants from the thermal power plants when thermal power plants burn the coal they release different types of gases like carbon dioxide carbon monoxide oxides of nitrogen and oxides of sulfur and they also release what is called as fly ash and boodida okay so second source of uh, air pollution is what you call it as forest fires F 
forest fires whenever the forest fires occurs they release carbon dioxide carbon monoxide okay they release the methane into the atmosphere okay then what about the industries what about the industries different types of industries are there okay they use lot of coal and they release carbon dioxide carbon monoxide oxides of sulfur oxides of nitrogen okay steel plants for example then what are the other things stubble burning stubble burning or burning of crop residue what will happen with the stubble burning or burning of crop residue ante polamlo meel pen unna anta kuda burn cheyadam they release huge amount of carbon monoxide huge amount of carbon dioxide and they also release huge amounts of methane okay so all this sources of air pollution okay see here carbon dioxide carbon dioxide it will cause what is called as the global warming and it will lead to climate change if you take the oxides of nitrogen oxides of sulfur they cause what is called as acid rains they cause what is called as acid rains understand this very clearly okay and you are forgetting one more thing that is vehicles diesel petrol vehicles they will release carbon monoxide they will release oxides of nitrogen they will release oxides of sulfur okay so again they also responsible for causing acid rain so all these are various types of air pollutants released from various sources understand this very clearly these are the sources what are the consequences of air pollution what are the consequences of air pollution so understand this very clearly what will be the consequences of air pollution so just understand this the consequences of air pollution it will lead to global warming and climate change it is leading to acid rains it is leading to acid rains it is leading to what is called as the formation of smog formation of smog so it is leading to different type of health impacts on the people health impacts on the people so all these are there understand this very clearly so air pollution sources are there air pollution consequences on the public or the people and then what will happen what are the solutions what are the solutions the solutions just try to understand here solutions to this particular problems of air pollution thermal power plants we are going for super critical thermal power plants forest fires we are using the sat services of satellites like venus satellite of israel like modi's satellite of nasa and virs satellite of nasa the government of india is using these satellite services real time to know the forest fires and stop them industries we have the cpcb and spcb okay pollution control boards central pollution control board state pollution control board to see that the industries are not emitting more pollutants and stubble burning the government of india and state governments collecting the uh, crop residue and turning them into biofuels giving some incentive to farmers vehicle pollution we are came out with what is called as bs norms bharat stage norms bs 1 2 3 4 6 bs 6 vehicles so this is how the solutions were there so air pollution issues in india sources of air pollution consequences of air pollution solutions of air pollution remember these things very clearly remember these things very clearly okay understand these things very clearly so this is how it is this is how it is understand this very clearly okay okay so this is the uh, what you call uh, about the air pollution so this is the topic actually this is the topic but i discussed the extra things okay international day for clean air for blue skies okay when it is 7 september who celebrates it united nation general assembly what is the theme healthy hair healthy planet very simple nothing much is there here then let us understand the international organization world food program world food program and what is the world food program is all about so first why it is in news so world food program of united nation appealed for more humanitarian aid to ethiopia tigray region ethiopia tigray region what is happening there okay where conflict between the government of ethiopia and forces in the northern tigray has thrown the country into turmoil and there is famine situation in tigray there is famine situation in tigray that means lack of food in this particular tigray region why the tigray region of ethiopia is facing this problem because there is the war going on between the ethiopian government forces and also the tigray rebels 
Tigre rebels. So that's why the World Food Program has okay appealed to different nations. The Tigre region of Ethiopia is facing lot of humanitarian crisis. There is no food. There is no water. Proper water supply is not there. Okay, food supply is not there. Okay, please ensure that all of us come together, collect the food grains, supply to these people. Otherwise, they will die of famine. Understand this very clearly. Okay. First of all, understand about this particular World Food Program. What is happening in Ethiopia uh, or the Tigray region? Then we will understand this particular World Food Program. Okay. So the news is very simple. World Food Program has appealed for the countries to provide the food grains to the Tigray people. So what is the Tigray region? So see here, Tigray region is part of the northern part of the Ethiopia. The capital of Ethiopia is Addis Ababa. So understand this very clearly. This is the capital. This is one of the state in the Ethiopia. Understand like that. Now Ethiopia, if you take the Ethiopia, see here, it is part of Horn of Africa. It is part of Horn of Africa, Ethiopia country. So it is having lot of ethnic groups. It is having lot of ethnic groups are there in the Ethiopia. Understand this very clearly. The Ethiopia country is having borders with what you call the borders are there with the six countries. The borders, land borders are there with the six countries. So what are these six countries with Ethiopia is having the borders. So understand this. They are Sudan, they are Sudan, then South Sudan, South Sudan, then you have what is called as Eritrea, Eritrea, okay, then you have what is called as Kenya, you have what is called as Kenya, then you have Somalia, Somalia is there, the land borders with Somalia, then finally they have the uh, land borders with Djibouti, G. Bauti. Understand this very clearly. So Ethiopia is having the land borders with the six countries. Tigray is part of the Ethiopia. It is a state in Ethiopia. Now what is the problem in Tigray? Understand this very clearly. Now Ethiopia is there. So see here. Ethiopia is there. The Prime Minister of Ethiopia. Okay. Habi Ahmadi. Abi Ahmadi. So Abi Ahmadi is the Prime Minister of Ethiopia. So this person Abi Ahmadi of Ethiopia. So he belongs to prosperity party. He belongs to prosperity party. Understand this very clearly. Okay. And recently the Abi Ahmadi, he got the Nobel Peace Prize. He got the 2019 Nobel Peace Prize. Nobel Peace Prize was given to this particular Ethiopia Prime Minister Abi Ahmadi. To, why? Because he settled the dispute between Ethiopia and Eritrea. Eritrea okay Eritrea country land border dispute is there land border dispute is there okay which is going on since 1998 okay so he signed a peace agreement with the Eritrea and and he simply solved that problem and that's why he got the Nobel Peace Prize in 2019 but what is the present situation the Ethiopia Prime Minister is Abi Ahmadi of Prosperity Party the Tigray state in Ethiopia Tigray state in Ethiopia Okay, there is a political party called as Tigray People Liberation Front. Tigray People Liberation Front. So these two are there. Prime Minister and Tigray People Liberation Front of Tigray region. So what is happening is that there is a conflict between the Prime Minister and the what you call Tigray People Liberation Front government. That means it is a state government and here the Prime Minister belongs to central government. Central government. So these the central government and state government both are fighting with each other. So central government that is the uh, Abi Ahmadi of Prosperity Party. He sent the military to this particular what you call Tigray region. Okay, why? Because the Tigray people, okay, that is the state government, they conducted the elections during the Corona time, first wave of Corona time, without listening to the prime minister. He got irritated and he sent the military. And the military sent by the Prime Minister of Ethiopia, they are creating a lot of problems in the Tigray region. And Tigray region, they will not sit quietly. People and also the military, police forces of that state government, they are also fighting with the central government of Prime Minister Abi Ahmadi Prosperity Party. Like that, there is a lot of problem happening and a lot of disputes are arising there. 
and entire tigray region fell into a civil war like condition and famine is there in this particular region for that the world food program has asked the countries to supply the food grains to the tigray region contribute okay this is how it is this is the background of this particular uh, what you call the conflict between ethiopia and tigray very simple understand this ethiopia prime minister abi ahmadi central government tigray is a state government ruled by the tigray people liberation front in the state government in this northern region so tigray state government they conducted the elections without the permission of the central government during the corona times and since they are not listening to the prime minister simply the prime minister has sent the military to the tigray region they are causing lot of disturbance there and tigray region already they have the police force they have the military they also started to fight with the central government of ethiopia and like this the war has started and now it is turned into a big humanitarian crisis in the tigray region lot of atrocities were committed they were reported so all that is separate news we will discuss the ethiopia conflict and we also discuss the ethiopia eritrea 1998 border conflict that was solved by him but he got the nobel peace prize but what happened also he got nobel peace prize now he sent the military to the tigray region okay this is the background here okay so this is how it is now let us understand about the world food program okay this is the news world food program it's a food assistance branch of the united nation and world's largest humanitarian organization addressing hunger and promoting food security so it promote the food security throughout the globe it tries to end hunger at the global level so world food program is assisting almost 100 million people in 83 countries every year it is sending the food grains food assistance okay it is established in 1961 its headquarters is in rome italy now understand this very clearly so it is funded by the voluntary donations most of which come from the governments world food program do not have a separate fund national governments they contribute some money to the world food program india also contribute some money to the world food program and apart from that the big private organizations like microsoft okay then uh, tesla corporation okay samsung they also contribute huge amount of money to the world food program why because food is provided to 100 million people in 83 countries understand that very clearly it works with united nation food and agriculture organization and international fund for agriculture and development i discussed about this two days back in the video class ifid so i am not repeating those things world food program is in news why because it appealed to the global countries to provide the food assistance to tigray region of ethiopia we have seen the ethiopia we have seen the conflict between ethiopia and tigray this is how it is now see here understand here what are the other uh, world food program it re publishes report called as global report on food crisis and it has a app called as share the meal app share the meal app you can open this app and you can just contribute some money so that that money will be useful it is used by world food program to provide food to the needy people 100 million people are given food and in 83 countries by world food program every year understand this very clearly it publishes global report on food crisis the world food program has got the nobel peace prize in 2020 remember this very clearly okay understand this very clearly and world food program has a plan called as strategic plan for 2017 2021 okay to end hunger at global level 2017 to 20 21 to end the hunger at global level they are working on it okay let us see how much progress they will achieve definitely they will achieve okay understand this very clearly we should be positive so this is about the world food program actually the news is this okay but we have to see the, this conflict happening in ethiopia and tigray and we have to know about the world food program also understand these things very clearly okay clearly so this is the thing here now this is the important topic for prelims okay we will see this also what is called as environment and biodiversity india's first conservation reserve is established for sea dugong so see here this is the sea dugong this is the sea dugong understand this very clearly now sea dugong if you see the sea dugong so this is herbivorous herbivorous 
marine mammal it is a marine that is living in the uh, ocean mammal it is not a fish it is a mammal so it is eating the sea grass it is eating the sea grass for the first time in india a conservation reserve was created for this particular what you call sea uh, what you call sea cow its name is dugong its name is dugong its name is dugong or sea dugong and the other name for it is sea cow other name for it is sea cow first time in india conservation reserve is created for the sea dugong where it, they created let us understand after understanding the sea dugong so see here the scientific name of sea dugong is dugong dugong it is also called as sea cow it is a herbivorous marine mammal it is not a fish it is a mammal okay understand that very clearly iucn red data book mentioned it as a vulnerable status okay and it is mentioned in schedule 1 of wildlife protection act 1972 it is also present in the sites convention on regulation of international trade in endangered species appendix 1 animal understand that very clearly it feeds on the sea grass so see here this is all the sea grass present at the sea bed inside the ocean water and understand one more thing world dugong day is celebrated on 28th may every year remember this very clearly you will get different types of questions from this slide content i will give all the information that is there okay then you will be very much uh, that will be useful for you in exams then understand here sea dugong sea dugong okay uh, task force was created for conservation of the dugongs in india by ministry of environment forest and climate change understand this also and india's first conservation reserve for the sea dugong is created in palk bay tamil nadu understand this very clearly so see here if you take the india map if you take the india map so see here you have the india map like this so sea dugong so india map is there like this so i will just uh, explain this in a fresh page i will explain this in this uh, white page so see here india map is there india is there like this so india has got a long coastline india has got a long coastline 7516 km long coastline is there okay understand this very clearly okay andaman nicobar and lakshadweep islands belongs to india now where you can see this sea dugong in india where you can see this sea dugong in india so see here so here you have the palk bay okay, and you have the gulf of mannar so see here understand here very clearly where you can see the sea dugong so here you have the palk bay palk bay and here you have the gulf of mannar gulf of mannar in at the coast of tamil nadu at the coast of tamil nadu gulf of mannar here you can see the sea dugong in andaman nicobar islands you can see the sea dugong understand this very clearly and they will just move along the west coast of india they will just move along the west coast of india and you can also see the sea dugongs in the gulf of kutch region gulf of kutch region gulf of kutch region understand this very clearly in these places gulf of kutch gulf of mannar palk bay andaman nicobar islands you can see the sea dugong you can see the sea dugong understand this very clearly and india's first conservation reserve for sea dugong is created in palk bay it is created in palk bay at the coast of tamil nadu india's first sea dugong conservation reserve understand this very clearly okay so this is the this is the news here and understand this the sea du world sea dugong day is celebrated on 28th may okay it is a iucn vulnerable status schedule one animal its scientific name is dugong dugong understand that this is the news but these are all facts associated with the sea dugong so let us understand some additional information also about sea dugong so see here they are present in 37 countries in indian ocean and pacific ocean waters that means indian ocean pacific ocean waters the bordering countries okay they are having this sea dugong i will show the map so see here see here this entire this is the sea dugong range so in the map you can see the sea dugong in india here this place you have sea dugong andaman nicobar you have sea dugong so this entire persian gulf water sea dugong okay along the coast of africa sea dugong is there along the coast of madagascar sea dugong is there on the northern part of australia sea dugong is there on this islands of philippines indonesia 
ओके जावा सुमत्रा मलेशिया ओके ऑल दिस साउथ चाइना सी म्यांमार कोस्ट यू हैव दि सी डुगा सो दिस एंटर प्लेस यू हैव दि हेबिटेट फॉर दि सी डुगा इन द वर्ल्ड मैप यू कैन सी दिस वेरी क्लियरली दिस इज द रेंज इन इंडियन ओशन इन पेसिफिक ओशन यू कैन सी दि सी डुगा इन थर्टी सिक्स कंट्री यू कैन सी दि सी डुगा सो दिस इज द मैप हियर अंडरस्टैंड दिस वेरी क्लियरली ओके इट इज there in 37 countries sorry not 36 37 countries in indian ocean pacific ocean second is it is found between 26 degrees north and south of equator 26 degrees north and south of equator only you can see this particular sea dugong 0 degree equator is there so 26 degree north of equator 27 degree south of equator these water bodies you can see this sea dugong sea dugong you can see it so this is about the sea dugong it is the only herbivorous mammal that is present there it belongs to the family of dugonidae dugonidae so understand this what you have to remember here is two important points one is india's first conservation reserve for sea dugong is created in palk bay tamil nadu what is the scientific name dugong dugong it is also called as sea cow it is iucn vulnerable species so this is the information so world dugong day celebrated on 28th may you can get a bit question in the group 1 group 2 prelims like that so understand this let us see some questions on the sea dugong okay so see here this is the 2013 question asked in the upsc exam about this sea dugong with reference to sea dugong mammal found in india which of the following statement is correct it is a herbivorous marine animal yes it is found along the entire coast of india no just now i told you it is found only in the west coast it is seen in andaman nicobar palk bay gulf of mannar and also the gulf of kutch east coast of india you do not have sea dugong remove this when you remove this this will go this will go only two are remaining let us find which is the correct answer it is given legal protection under schedule 1 of wildlife protection act 1972 yes then the answer is 1 and 3 like that very simple next one more question on sea dugong so see here asked in ssc cgl examination very recently so ssc cgl general studies okay in india dugong sea cow is found in the biodiversity site of which place so see here sundarbans sundarban mangrove east coast not there manas national park okay it is a marine mammal manas national park is on land this is remove it nakrek biosphere reserve meghalaya on land but this is living in water so remove this gulf of mannar just now i told you it is the answer so one species one creature three questions in the national level exams so ssc cgl students are there see it so this is 2014 prelims question upsc consider the following animals sea cow or sea dugong sea horse sea lion which of the above are mammals so sea horse is not a mammal it is a shrimp or shrimp species sea lion you can see it in the uh, arctic region so one and two are correct so which of the above are mammals which of the above are mammals so sea horse is not a mammal so uh, you can remove this you can remove this so answer is 1 and 3 only so this is how it is sea okay uh, dugong or sea cow related information this the topics you will, we will see tomorrow the time is not sufficient so just look into this particular slide okay sea dugong this is the region okay so it is a scientific name dugong dugong mammal herbivorous mammal okay the group of dugongs are called as herd they can live up to 70 years the height 6 feet man and the height kuda ivu undi understand that very clearly okay so they eat up to 40 kg of sea grass every day 40 kg of sea grass every day so what are the threats so let me give you the list of threats threats are global warming and climate change threats are ocean water temperature increasing understand that threats are loss of habitat loss of habitat so this particular sea grass is being threatened because of the big ships that are moving fourth is okay accidental killing accidental killing by big ships 
then what is the other threat illegal hunting illegal hunting people are hunting it for meat and oil then what are the other threats oil spills oil spills that are happening in the what you call the ocean oil spills then seventh one okay accidental catch in the fish nets accidental catch in fish nets accidental catch in fish nets understand this very clearly okay so these are all various threats global warming and climate change increasing ocean water temperature loss of habitat of sea grass accidental killing okay by the what you call fast moving ships illegal hunting for meat and oil oil spills in the ocean accidental catch in the fish nets all of them they are threat to this particular creature understand this very clearly so dugongs can stay under water only for 6 minutes since they are mammals they cannot stay under water forever they have to come to the surface every 6 minutes for air so thank you very much okay have a nice day so today we have seen this uh, important topics uh, okay so we'll stop here remaining topics tomorrow we'll see okay so understand this so morning you will get the video evening you will get the pdf uh, english and telugu in the telegram group of ashoka online academy and the whatsapp groups so understand these things but definitely you watch the video for analysis purpose i am telling you know 6 months if you watch correct regularly these videos this analysis will help you in different types of examinations so thank you very much have a nice day okay so please support us watch the content and your support is very important for this particular classes student support is very very important otherwise without student there is no teacher understand that very clearly so your support is very very important your encouragement is very very important for people like us to be uh, continuing this particular sessions so understand this very clearly your encouragement is very very vital understand that very clearly every teacher is motivated only by the students okay he is not motivated okay by any other thing only the students support is required okay understand that very clearly do support us subscribe to ashoka online academy thank you very much